In the last video, I said that there was something wrong between the model and the car, and I have figured it out. It is the measurements that I had for the lower ball joint. After measuring this and then comparing it to the model, I found that the angle of the ball joint in relation to the hub face is off by one degree. The distance between the hub and the ball joint was off the less than half an inch. And then the depth of the ball joint into the spindle was also slightly off, I think like a quarter of an inch. But those three measurements are crucial for the suspension geometry. Once I fixed them in the model, yes, the model showed that I had positive camber uh, just sitting at ride height and it got worse from there. Welcome back everybody. We are working on the Mustang SLA suspension again. If you remember in the last video where we left it off was the suspension went up and down, but something was not right in the geometry. I've gotten some feedback from some of you guys that I could go with a shorter upper control arm. Yes, that's true. Uh, this is the shortest one that's offered by Joe's Racing. This is the seven inch. There are some other ones on the market or I could cut up and modify a control arm to be shorter. I don't really want to cut up and modify this one and you also need room in in between here for the coil over so i don't really want to go any shorter with that if you look at like a ride tech's sla that they are putting out there yes they have a shorter upper control arm but they are also using the factory mounting for putting in their own shorter coil over so they're not even going through the upper control arm and then if you go back to my suspension geometry video i had in there several different mounting holes for the lower control arm and in that last build video we only used the stock one but in the suspension geometry one i had the stock one inch higher two inches higher so we know from that video that the stock location will not work. Uh, we, I, what I really want to do is one inch or two inches higher, which if you know anything about the Maximum Motorsports K member, they have two holes in theirs. The, one, the lower hole is one inch higher than stock, and then the second hole is two inches higher than stock. So that tells me that I'm kind of going in the right direction, which is good. But from, that, uh, from the build video, we know that the lower hole does not work with the stock uh, control arm. It's too short. So I'm going to be building my own, as I had mentioned in that video, and I've been buying a lot of parts. So I've designed some parts, I've bought some parts. Uh, we got some things coming from HAL, some from Speedway Motors, some from Summit. Uh, I wanted to try to see if I could build or buy something straight off the shelf. So this is a lower control arm from HAL Racing. Unfortunately, there wasn't too many measurements uh, offered on the, the website. So once I got this, I found out that this is just not going to work for some of the components that I've already bought, such as the coilovers and things like that. And yes, I could modify this as just steel, but if I'm going to be modifying this, why not just build my own? There's nothing too special about this. Um, so I bought square tubing and some ball joint sleeves. So we're gonna be building our own lower control arm. I got some rod ends, some spacers, uh, coilover mounts. I've designed up some parts. Also from how we got the, the ball joints and all kinds of parts have come in and we're gonna build our own lower control arm. And then I've also kind of figured out how I'm gonna be doing my mounting of the control arm. So this is gonna be my my front mount so you can see three different holes so i got stock one inch higher and two inches higher the reason i put the stock one in there is just so i can help line it up with the stock bolt and then we can figure out where to drill the other holes so once this is all in there this lower hole will probably never be used and then this will be for the rear one so we'll be putting it in kind of like this and then my the bolt instead of going long ways in the car it's now going to be going vertically in the car uh, so we'll be able to adjust our height just based on that by going to my own lower control arm it's actually easier to figure out this mounting because i'm now using rod ends uh, instead of using the big bushing which took up a lot of room and didn't really have that much uh, deflection and angularity that could be going into that so going to my own lower control arm actually makes mounting 
a lot easier. Uh, I'm still going to be using the factory K member and if you look closely at this or know too much about them you can see that I have modified it slightly. Uh, right here on both sides I've cut it off short so this used to come out a good like two inches here to accompany the a spring that would be there uh, but I've cut it off so it's now going to be pretty close to flush with the frame rails on the car. That's to allow this uh, upper control arm when it's mounted on this plate to have room in here to actually uh, move. With how it was, it was hitting on these and couldn't actually get the, the angle that I need to have this thing at. So that is uh, one modification that's been done on there. We'll also be welding these inside of here inside of the the cups i guess for the lower control arms so that is one thing that i'll be working on next we'll get the holes drilled and then the k member is pretty much done one thing i was wondering about the k member so i've mentioned earlier that i was thinking about building my own which it may still do but i'm going to kind of ask you guys would you rather me later on, not right now, later on build my own K member and you want to see how that kind of goes or would you want to see if I use like a Maximum Motorsports one that it may be more relatable to uh, you guys out there to do this kind of SLA set, set up using uh, Maximum Motorsports K member. So I'll kind of leave that out guys up to you. I think I could use the Maximum Motorsports one just as well as building my own or using this one. Uh, the Maximum Motorsports is a good unit. It will have similar geometry to what I'm already factoring in here and it will be lighter. So leave some comments down below on what you would like to see. All right, I've kind of gone over all this. I'm going to get these plates all kind of tacked in here. So we'll have the right suspension mounting points in the K member. I'll do that all off camera and I'll check back in with you shortly when we start doing this uh, lower control arm. All right, I have the mounts all tacked in here. So I got the three holes drilled and that mount tacked in. And then this one is tacked in back here. This one will have the vertical bolt that goes through a uh, heim joint that will be in there. And then this one has the, the three different holes that are one inch apart. So that is all done. So time to move on to the control arm. So what I have set up right here is a, a jig that I made. I drew this up in Fusion 360 and then got the pieces cut out. So what it will do is hold uh, this arm here and my ball joint kind of at the angle that I want it to be at. So I want to put a 10 degree angle in the, the ball joint sleeve and I didn't really have anything laying around that would be exactly at 10 degrees. A lot of the magnets are, you know, 30 degrees or 45 degrees. So I figured this was the, my best option and wasn't that expensive or hard to do, you know. I think getting everything cut and shipped out was 30 bucks. And then I'll just notch this arm and I can slide it in there and everything will be nice and level, kind of where I want it to be. And I can tack it up and weld it from here. All right, I got the arm all tacked up here, the 10 degrees that I want. I haven't quite cut it to length yet. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what length I want it to be at. I will have some adjustment with the rod end that's going in here, but I want to make sure that I don't cut it too short. Got the, the ball joint, we'll just slide, uh, we'll screw right into there. And then for this end, we have this uh, weld in bong right there. So that will be, I think it's three quarter inch uh, for the rod end. And that will uh, basically be the main beam for the lower control arm. I will then have some pieces that weld on here that will attach a, a strut rod on the back. And then we'll probably be welding on some pieces on the front to hold on the uh, sway bar and then I'll have my coilover mount on the top. So all fairly basic and then it will end up looking similar to that uh, that how one or other ones that we've seen on the internet that are just uh, a square tubing based one. 
So let's get everything kind of installed on the car and we can start mocking this up on the car. All right, we got everything installed on the car. I got the car basically sitting at ride height and I got this sitting close to ride height. And I know I've said this before, but I have a suspension that moves up and down. Uh, so this is really exciting. And we're actually getting the correct camber gain now. So I'm sitting right at negative one, roughly right at the moment, and we get more negative camber as we move up. And yeah, it's sitting at just negative one, which is, yeah, I know is not very much, but right now I have a, a spacer in here to push the upper one out. So that's how I'm gonna be controlling my camber is by just putting in these different spacers. So I have a whole bunch of different sizes all the way from like, I think an eighth all the way up to um, quarter inch, half inch, I believe. So plenty of uh, adjustments there. And then the bottom is also screwed all the way in where I can screw that out some to push this, the bottom, the lower control arm out and give me more camber. But that will also, doing any of those measurements will also push my wheel further out. And this is already gonna be wider than it was, which was already wider than stock. Uh, but it's something that kind of has to be done at the moment. But I did wanna push everything out more so I could then get uh, a wheel with more normal offset. If you've been watching my videos, then you know that the wheels that I currently run on the car are really low offset. I think they're like uh, a plus 12 and a typical Mustang or most typical cars are more of in the plus 20-ish range, like 22, 24, um, that's in millimeter range. So I'd like to be able to push this out so then I can actually push the tire back in and not have so much of the tire sticking, uh, so much of the offset of the tire sticking out. So if I'm able to get the uh, higher offset, which will push more of the tire inside the car, it will help with the scrub radius. So right now my scrub radius probably isn't all that great with that tire that I am running, uh, but it is just something that I will have to overcome for right now because I'm not buying another set of wheels at the moment it is just not in the budget, unfortunately. Uh, but it is something that I was planning on doing kind of down the road because I would like to step up to the next size in wheel. Uh, but that is kind of where everything is standing at the moment. Uh, I still need to weld on the piece to do the, the strut rod to go back here. So right now there's nothing that really holds this uh, forward and aft. I just have like the up and down going on at the moment. but. I've measured that out. I have ordered the parts to do that. So the next thing that I need to figure out is my coilover uh, mounting on here. So I have this uh, piece from Speedway Motors to kind of that I can put in here to simulate the coilover. And I could try to figure out where I'm gonna be getting that all mounted up. But that is gonna be for a later video. I think I have covered enough for now, rambled on enough, but the suspension is moving up and down. It's doing, you know, pretty much what I had designed in. So recap real quick, uh, put in the, the mounts, the lower mounts into the stock K member. So now I have upwards of two inches higher. I have uh, three holes in there and then the, the rear one just put spacers in there to get it. I built the lower control arm. It's all just tacked together, but it's all in there. Uh, the lower or the upper arm is unchanged from before. I just put in the, the spacer for controlling the, the camber. All right, that covers it for this video. Yes, there is more to do, but we will cover that in a later video. If you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. We'll have a lot more coming. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Later.